Hello and welcome to this second information video for parents of children in reception. Um, today I want to talk to you about early reading um, and how you can help your children and support the school um, as your children begin their journey on towards becoming a reader. So the aims for today are to help you understand more about how children learn to read how we teach children to read at Shawley and how you can help your child learning to read at home. So how do children learn to read? So they need a real wide range of skills that they can use together to find the meaning of the text. They need to understand the way that print works, how we hold books, follow the direction of the print and the meaning of the words and the letters. And they need to take risks when they're reading. They need to make mistakes and be confident to try again. Mistakes, see mistakes as a way of learning. So the strategies that they need to develop are using visual cues. So this is the shape and the sound of the letters and the words recognised by sight and follows on directly from their learning of phonics in school. They need to gather meaning, which can be gained from looking at the pictures. So please, when you're reading with your children, do not cover up the pictures. They're a really important part of children decoding text. Um, this, they need to understand the structure of the language and what word would comfortably fit. So this is where when you're um, speaking with your children, their understanding of how sentences work um, is really important because they need to understand what makes sense. And they also need to learn to predict what would sensibly come next um, and as this will help them in decoding text too. So basically, this is a model of the journey that children go on when they're becoming readers. Um, they start off in the kind of bottom left square where they have poor word recognition processes and poor comprehension. And we're aiming to get them up into the top right where they really understand what they're reading and they're really good at decoding it. So, so to try and understand some of the skills that children develop as readers, um, it's important for us to take ourselves back and obviously not many of us can remember actually learning to read ourselves. So apologies if you've seen this before, if you've been to any of my reading meetings, but I think it is quite a good way of demonstrating um, some of the skills that we use as readers. If we try and work out what um, would come next, the two boys picked um, and you can imagine there's all sorts of things that would fit comfortably in here. The two boys picked um, apples, um, the two boys picked weeds up from the lawn, the two boys picked their noses, for example. So we need some more clues. Um, the two boys picked something from Anne. So we've got some clues there because of our understanding of language. We know that at the end of the sentence following Anne, it must be a word beginning with a vowel. So we could have the two boys picked apples from Anne apple tree. Okay, now my predictions are being confirmed here. So I could still say the two boys picked apples from an apple tree. It's still fitting, so it's looking promising. Okay, now I can't carry on thinking that it's about two boys picking apples because I've got some clues, some visual clues, that tell me that the first missing word begins with an F and an R for so my next prediction is going to be the two boys picked fruit from an apple tree okay now I've got to think again because it can't be an apple tree because it's something that ends in a T um, so it's got at the end so the two boys picked fruit from an apricot tree perhaps there we go, my predictions have been confirmed. So you can see the importance of understanding how a sentence works and using the visual clues to work out what the actual words are. Okay, this is another example of some of the skills that we use as readers. So if you have a go at reading this, you're using your knowledge of what you're expecting to see in the text because of the way it begins. The title, The Beautiful Princess, implies that it's some sort of fairy story. Um, it begins with a traditional way of beginning a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who longed to lead a normal life. 
And then, even though not all of the letters are correct, I can start to try and work out the patterns in the language. So I can straight away think the Zs are E's. For one of her holidays, this determined princess decided she would no longer be constrained by having to conform to, to, to society's expectations. So you can see gradually more and more of the letters are being replaced by Zs and Xs, um, but I'm still able to use my knowledge of language to work it out. So with gay abandon, she set off on her adventures to an idyllic hideaway on the South Pacific. So how do we teach children to read at Shawley? Well, we share books regularly with the children to really try and foster an interest in books. You can see um, children browsing in the book corner when you pop into the reception classes and that's actively encouraged. Children choosing stories to be read aloud to um, is a really important part of the day. Um, there is a huge commitment to daily phonics every single day. As I explained last week in my phonics information video, um, there is a um, dedicated time for phonics. Um, building their confidence to have a go and encouraging them to take risks. As a teacher, making mistakes for them to correct, showing that it's all right to make mistakes and there's nothing children love more than correcting a teacher. Um, and then giving them the strategies to correct these mistakes, which we do through modelling and thinking aloud when we're reading to the children. So what we do at Shawley, every day there's some sort of shared reading. We do sequencing activities, providing a text rich environment, making class books, reading quietly, reading and telling stories, guided and group reading, if that's appropriate, on um, according to their level of reading towards the end of the year and our daily phonics as already mentioned. So when we're reading one-to-one -one with a child we'll go through a sequence for reading and this includes all of the things that you can see on the screen there at the moment. So a book introduction, we don't just pick up a book and start reading it. We look at the book, we look at the cover, we look at the title and we look at the pictures and try and work out before we even attempt to read it what the book is all about. We might introduce the children to the names of the characters and to any tricky words that are included in the book. Then we do what's called a strategy check, which is basically reminding the children of all the skills and the strategies that they can use if they come to a word that they're not sure of. Predominantly at the beginning, this will be phonics um, and their knowledge of the sounds that letters make and they're blending to read. Then we encourage them to have a go independently reading the text. And then when we're returning and responding to the text, we'll be talking to the children about the things that they did that really helped them. So that we're making it really explicit. You know, for example, um, I really like the way you used the initial letter sound when you were working out that word that you didn't know. Um, and then rereading texts. Sometimes children become really, really fond of a book and want to read it over and over again. This is actively encouraged, even though it might drive the adults nuts um, or you as a parent when you, you think, oh, not this one again. But actually it's enabling the child to experience success and to behave as a real reader when they've learned texts off by heart. I can always remember my son um, and his favourite book was We're Going on a Bear Hunt. And when his little sister was born, he wasn't yet a reader, but he knew that story so well that he could sit and turn the pages. He knew that the story went from left to right um, and the pictures helped him remember the story and he could read it to her over and over again. Okay, so a few health warnings about reading. Things that we really, really don't want you to do. So force your child to read, no. Sometimes children can be really incredibly tired when they come home from school and that might not be the right time to get a book out and encourage them to read. It might be a better time to read to the child. Some children are wide awake early morning and that might be a better time to read. Um, please don't cover the pictures in the book, as I stated earlier, or dwell too much on the mistakes that they make. Really try and praise them for the attempts that they made rather than pointing out everything that they got wrong. Um, please don't make comparisons with the progress of others. I know as a parent, it can be really worrying if your child doesn't seem to be keeping up with other children. Um, but 
they all learn at a different pace and in their own way. And please, as well, don't keep your concerns to yourself. Always come and speak to Mrs. Harrison, Miss Button, myself, Mrs. Snelling, um, about anything that you're worried about, and hopefully we'll be able to reassure you. So what can you do to help? Read, read, read. If children see adults reading and see that they are enjoying and making meaning from text, it will encourage them more to have a go for themselves. Show enthusiasm for books yourself. Even if you're not an avid reader yourself, pretend. Okay, read regularly to your child. Um, praise and encourage your child. Keep reading aloud to your child, however well they're reading. Don't think that, oh, they can read themselves now, so I'll stop reading to them, because you will read texts that are slightly beyond what they're able to read themselves, and it's giving them experiences of good language models, it's expanding their vocabulary, especially if you talk about the books that you read to them. And that's the final point, talking about the books that you're reading together is a really important part of developing really strong comprehension skills as they get older. Okay, avoid stress and boredom. Help your child to learn their sounds. Play in word games like I Spy. I think I mentioned that in the phonics information video. Um, really good for encouraging children to become readers. Making your own books at home. It, they could be just full of pictures and encouraging the child to tell the story that the pictures tell. Asking questions about what's happening in the story. Again, really good for developing their comprehension skills. Using questions to help your child become an independent reader and reading words or signs in the environment. Those of you that have heard me speak before will remember, hopefully, that you know I've said children can read a lot more than you think they can before they become able to read books. How many children don't recognise the golden M for McDonald's when they're driving along in the car, or the word Asda on the side of a lorry because they've seen it in the environment so many times? Okay, so, Hopefully that all made sense and gives you some encouragement for how you can support your children at home. They will bring books home to begin with that don't have any words. Um, and that's absolutely fine because, again, it's developing their understanding of a story. Nursery rhymes are another good way. Chanting and singing nursery rhymes together really has been proven to be of a massive benefit to children as they grow up. Those children that know nursery rhymes well have got the beginnings of an understanding of what a story is um, and rhyme and rhythm can really help them becoming a reader. Okay, I hope all of that is useful and that we can work together to help our children to become good readers. Okay, thank you very much for listening and watching.